Should you use WordTune to write? And what else can this AI tool do? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins, and I've been testing WordTune for the last few months. I found it's quite good at saving time with those boring, laborsome writing tasks, like Google meta descriptions. But should you use WordTune for your work? And what makes it any better than, say, ChatGPT or Google Bard? Let's find out in this video. Oh, and if you do like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Because over the next few weeks, I'm going to start profiling more AI writing tools just like WordTune. Let's dive in. One thing I liked about WordTune is you can actually try it for free without even having to set up an account. So simply visit the WordTune website and if you scroll down a little bit, you'll find this helpful box. So paste in a couple of hundred words or a sentence or two and it'll give you a flavor for how this tool works. So if I click on rewrite, it'll automatically give me a few options for this piece of text that I took from a news article in Ireland. And I could potentially take any of these paragraphs and reuse them and cite the original article. And that's basically how WordTune works, but it has some other features and obviously it can do a lot more than that if you take out a premium account. So how much does a WordTune account cost? Well, you can use WordTune for free and you can rewrite 10 pieces of text per day. To be honest, that's not very much. So you're gonna to need to take a premium subscription. That's gonna cost you $9.99 per month if you pay it all up front as an annual fee, or if you pay it monthly, it's gonna cost you $24.99 per month. So to put things in context, Grammarly costs you $30 per month, and ChatGPT currently costs about $20 per month to get access to the latest version. So when you take out a premium subscription, which is what I did, you can rewrite any amount of text. You can pick between tone of voice, you can shorten and expand your text, and you also get access to premium support. And I'm gonna walk through each of these features. Now there is a version of WordTune that you can take out if you have people in your team who you believe are going to use this tool as well. But for this video, I'm gonna focus on the WordTune premium version. So once you've set up your WordTune account and taken out a subscription, you can use the WordTune web editor. You can also use the WordTune read and summarizer tool, which I'll show you in a few moments. It's quite good. And you can also install an extension for your browser. And in this case, I installed an extension for Chrome. First up, let's look at the WordTune editor. I've gone ahead and pasted in a sample article into the WordTune web editor. And this has grammar and spelling errors, and some of the sentences are a little bit clunky. Now, if you're gonna use the WordTune web editor, it's best to disable any other plugin that you're using. For example, Grammarly, because you'll get confused by all of the underlines and colors that will appear beneath your phrases and sentences. So when you paste your text into the web editor, the first thing you can do is click on anything that's underlined in purple. And WordTune will propose more concise alternatives. So I wrote, I often find myself wondering what new creative and business endeavors to embark on next. A little bit clunky. WordTune suggested I change this to, I often wonder which upcoming creative or business endeavors to embark on next. Not sure about upcoming, so I'm gonna send that to the trash, but I do like this one, so I'm gonna accept this and apply this to my document. WordTune also has a grammar editor built into it, so it underlines any grammar mistakes in red. So I wrote, I earns my first $100, and WordTune suggested I change this to earned, and that's correct. And I found the grammar editor is comparable to Grammarly, but it doesn't quite catch and fix as many issues as that grammar checker. And I do have another video about Grammarly on the channel, which I recommend you check out if you're interested in learning more about how to use it. Anyway, back to rewriting. If I'm not happy with the suggestions that WordTune is underlined in purple, I can actually select some of the text myself and then click rewrite and it will analyze everything that I've selected and give me a couple of different options. And I can also change these options based on my preferred tone of voice, which I'll show you in a few moments. And I can also choose whether I want to shorten or expand these. And I can work on individual sentences or paragraphs. I could highlight the entire paragraph and I could say to myself, you know what, this is a little bit short. I haven't quite hit my word count. So this is what WordTune is quite good at. So I can expand this entire paragraph. And once I click on expand, it'll just take a few moments to scan the paragraph. And then it's gonna give me a few different options that I can pick from. So let's pick this one here. In my opinion, it's difficult not to get greedy when it comes to pursuing exciting new opportunities. It's a little bit different to what I wrote, but you know, it's another option that I could choose. WordTune is also quite good if you want to shorten something down. Here's another clunky paragraph I wrote. 
These days I use keyboards and analytics tools. It goes on. So I'm gonna highlight the entire paragraph and I'm gonna click shorten. And again, WordZoom will just take a moment to scan the paragraph in question. And then it'll give me a few options to pick from. These days I use keywords and analytics tools to gauge if there's demand. That's pretty similar to what I wrote already. I like this one. Currently I use keyboards and analytics tools to find out if a topic is popular. That's a bit easier to understand, so I'll go with that version. You can also use WordTune to rewrite sections of your work based on your preferred tone of voice. Now there are only really two options that you can pick from, casual or formal. So perhaps if you're gonna write something academic or businessy, you're gonna pick formal. And if it's a blog post or email or something for social media, you're gonna pick casual. So I'm gonna highlight a sentence here. The internet is ripe with opportunities for creatives. And let's change this to casual. You can start a blog, self-publish a book, launch a content website, it's pretty similar to what I wrote. So let's scroll down. If you're a creative, the internet is full of opportunities. That's a little bit better than what I wrote, so I'm gonna accept that change. But what if I was writing something for, I suppose a business case for work or something that's just a little bit more formal? Well, if I click on formal, it's gonna give me a couple of options. Creatives have many options on the internet. Ah, that's a little bit generic. It is possible to start a blog, self-publish a book, establish a content website. That is a little bit boring, but yes, it's probably formal. So I could go with that option. WordTune also has some additional features, which I had mixed results with. So if you click anywhere and then click on plus, you can access what are called spices. And then you can give WordTune a type of prompt. So you can ask it to continue writing something that you've stopped writing. It's probably good for writer's block. You can ask it to explain something in more simple language, emphasize it, expand it, give an example, define it, give it an analogy and source some facts. Now I did like the continue writing option because sometimes I'm a little bit unsure about what to say next. And I could see how this could be useful for somebody with writer's block or somebody who's unsure what they should say next in a particular article. However, I had less or I got less use from uh, the historical facts and inspirational quotes. Sure, it's fun to put an inspirational quote into an article, but I'm not really sure how the quote is relevant to this article in question. And it just seemed like these quotes were picked at random. You can also use spices to sort or to source facts and statistics. Now again, I had some mixed results with this. And like any AI tool, if you're gonna use them to source statistical facts or figures, I recommend double checking everything that these tools come up with, because often they can be wrong. So according to WordTune, there are five common reasons why people give up on their goals. And it gave me a list of these reasons. Now I'd say these aren't facts, these are more arguments, and I probably want some figures or citations that I could put in to actually prove that this is true. Still, it's useful if you find yourself blocked or unsure about what you're gonna say next. And it does actually provide the original article that you can go and consult. So I click through to this article. It's a blog post on a personal development blog about why people give up on their goals. Now that doesn't mean that these are facts. It's just something that somebody wrote on a website elsewhere online. Here's my favorite WordTune feature. So it excels at summarizing articles that you upload, paste, or copy and paste into it. As an example, here's an article that appeared in the Irish National Newspaper today, all about a whopping fine that Meta faced because of how it's using uh, customer data. So I took this URL and I pasted it into WordTune and it only took a second to generate this bullet point summary of the entire article. And this will be quite helpful for anybody who's researching complex topics or perhaps has a lot of reading material that they want to work through. For example, somebody in academia. And you could quickly build up a library of your summaries and also your notes. And you can even use this to add to your personal knowledge management system or Zettelkasten. If you're unsure about the Zettelkasten method, I do have videos on the channel that you should check out as well. I did try some other AI tools to see how they handle summaries. So I pasted in the same URL and into ChatGTP4 and ChatGPT told me it's sorry for any confusion, but it doesn't currently have the access to analyze content on the internet directly. At least not yet, but I understand this feature is coming. I pasted the exact same prompt into Google Bard, which is Google's new AI tool. And it only took less than a second to generate this very brief summary, but the summary was reasonably accurate. And considering that Google Bard is free to use, whereas you have to pay $25 for WordTune, this could be a good alternative for you. Lately, I've been testing a new product called Grammarly Go, which comes from Grammarly. And it actually enables you to work in any writing application and do some of the things that WordTune can do. So as an example, here's the same article in Ulysses, which is my writing application for Mac. Now don't worry if you don't have Ulysses, the workflow is pretty much the same. 
just install the Grammarly desktop app and then look for the Grammarly Go icon. And you will see there are options for identifying gaps, giving ideas for improvement, picking out my main point, and also for summarizing the article or lengthening it or shortening it. So let me show you one example. So I'm gonna put in the same or a prompt that's similar to what we did in WordTune a few moments ago. Give me some statistics and facts about why people give up on their goals. And let's see what Grammarly Go comes up with. Now, obviously this is a more of a conversational chatbot, so you do need to come up with the prompt yourself self, rather than clicking on a button. But you can see here it's come up with a few different facts and bullet points that I could potentially insert into my article. So it's citing a study conducted by the University of Scranton. Now I've no idea if this fact is actually correct about why people achieve their or don't achieve their New Year's resolutions. So I'd still go and verify this before I publish the article in question. And of course, like with WordTune, there are options for making it more persuasive or assertive. So let's try more persuasive and see what Grammarly Go comes up with. And you can see here that it's rewritten the article, much like with what WordTune does. Now Grammarly Go is free to try, but like with WordTune, you're quickly going to hit a cap. And if you want to get access to 500 prompts, which is more than most people will need, you'll need to take out a Grammarly premium subscription. If you install the WordTune plugin, you can start shortening or expanding text that you write anywhere in your browser and even in your email. So as an example, here is an email that I got from somebody who's looking to advertise on my site. So I'm just gonna paste in some text that I would normally send. We currently don't accept placements or ads. And now if I click on the WordTune icon or I can use a keyboard shortcut, it'll give me a different or a couple of different options that I can choose from. And let's say that this is a bit too short. Well, I can click on the expand option. WordTune will then give me this variation that I can send to this person who's pitching me. Now, as clever as these AI tools are, they really are changing incredibly quickly. So again, Grammarly Go, which is only in beta and just came out a few weeks ago, will actually help me generate an entire response. So if I click on the Grammarly Go icon, it'll scan the email for a few moments. It'll tell me what the sender's intent is, and I can choose to acknowledge or decline or suggest further discussion. So I'm gonna click decline, and Grammarly Go will give me an entire email that I can quickly insert. So while WordTune is good at rephrasing my sentences, this saves me even more time. WordTune is a great tool and I really liked it. Up until quite recently, I was using it to summarize articles for social media, to write meta descriptions, and also to take sections of articles and shorten and expand them. However, AI tools are changing rapidly. Now you can do pretty much everything that WordTune does using ChatGPT or Google Bard and both tools are cheaper. Or you could pay a little bit more and you could get access to Grammarly, which has a best in class grammar checker, a plagiarism checker, which WordTune does not have, and also Grammarly Go. And that'll cost you just an extra $5 per month. Now I'd still recommend checking out WordTune and trying it for free on the WordTune website. It is quite good if you need to rephrase something in a hurry. And I particularly liked its ability to summarize existing articles. But it's gonna be really interesting to see if a tool like WordTune can keep up with ChatGPT, Google Bard, and Grammarly. What AI tools are you using to write? Let me know in the comment section below this video and I'll check them out if I can.